Apple has spent many years thinking different, and for the majority of its existence has gone far off the beaten path in many types of microprocessors it has used. While the rest of the industry was developing on x86 processors, Apple was developing on 68K, PowerPC, and now its own in-house brew ARM processor called Apple Silicon. The Apple Silicon M1 Macs are the first Mac since 2006 to not run an x86 CPU. So although less than scientific, we thought it'd be fun to have a drag race between Apple's latest non-x86 Mac and the last non-x86 Mac Apple made. I say less than scientific for a couple of reasons. Firstly, we don't have a way to run the same applications directly on each system since PowerPC slash Intel universal binaries are 32-bit, but Big Sur will only run 64-bit Intel and Apple Silicon binaries. Also, we couldn't find a benchmarking tool that was compiled for PowerPC and 64-bit Intel to run on each machine, so we used emulators and Wine to conduct some, most of our tests. At least it's the perfect excuse to run OS 9 on Apple Silicon. Lastly, we're comparing one of Apple's highest powered professional towers, PowerMac Dual G5 with 8GB RAM, to one of their lowest powered portables, MacBook Air M1 with 8GB RAM and passive cooling. We start with a boot time test. The criteria is simple. Whichever system boots from a cold start to a fully loaded OS 9 environment is the winner. And even though the G5 trailed behind with a black screen for a very long time at the start, it came out the winner. Now we fire up MacBench. Keep in mind, we're not running this the way it was designed to run, which is natively on G3 era hardware. So although it works, there are a couple of hiccups in our setup. Firstly, the MacBook Air gets to a point in the test where it stops and claims to be out of disk space but there's still over 5 gigabytes on the virtual disk. Weird. Secondly, the Power Mac complains that it doesn't have the supplementary disk, yet proceeds to access the contents of that disk after dismissing the error. It proceeds through the test, but after the graphical test, it will loop around and start the test from the beginning, but it doesn't tell you it's doing this. It will just run the test over and over and over indefinitely. Fortunately, with both systems, we're able to at least get past the point that displays the results we're interested in. So that's a plus. The MacBook scored 2,702 in the processor test, 2,916 in the floating point test, 16,947 in the disk test, and 4,923 in the graphics test. Although the MacBook Air did complete the CD-ROM test unlike the G5, the disk had to be ripped and mounted as an image, which renders the test less than meaningful. The Power Mac scored 4,850 in the processor test, 5,429 in the floating point test, 5,257 in the disk test, and 6,014 in the graphics test. So while we declare the Power Mac the winner with from the raw results, MacBook was running OS 9 inside Sheepshaver, which obviously netted an enormous performance penalty. Sheepshaver does not even natively support Apple Silicon, so we were emulating PowerPC with Intel instructions, then translating them to Apple Silicon through Rosetta 2. Also, this particular Power Mac is currently fitted with a factory dual 8GB rotational drives in striped RAID 0. Although this was fast back in the day, there's still no match for Apple Silicon SSDs, even taking into account MacBook's performance penalty running through emulation. Now onto the RAR extraction test. We compiled a Linux ISO into RAR using the highest possible compression on a PC with WinRAR. Next, we proceeded to use the Unarchiver to unpack the file on both systems. The Power Mac G5 using a native universal binary and the MacBook Air M1 running an Intel 64 binary through Rosetta 2 translation. This was really no contest. The MacBook absolutely obliterated the Power Mac at this task. And now for our final test, Halo Combat Evolved. This test presented some difficulty. While the G5 happily ran the universal binary for Halo, the universal binary was a 32-bit Intel app, which meant it couldn't run on Big Sur. 
We eventually resorted to the Windows version running on Code Weaver's crossover, but had also issues running our retail version on there. With proper tweaks and adjustments, we were able to eventually get the demo version running with proper tweaks set up. No matter how hard we tried though, we could not get the full version to run. Performance was... interesting. Both systems were set to 1024 by 768 in windowed mode with all settings set to high. The pre-game sequence was incredibly choppy on the MacBook. The color was pretty washed out on the Power Mac, but that is most likely to do with our test LG monitor. The MacBook had points where it was incredibly smooth, but this was primarily during times where there was very little happening on screen. Overall, the MacBook was borderline playable at times due to its low frame rate, and the Power Mac was more than playable the entire time. In this test, the Power Mac comes out the winner. So there you have it. If you extract RAR files, then buy an M1 Apple Silicon MacBook Air. If you use your computer for anything other than extracting RAR files, you should buy a used Power Mac Dual G5 instead. Alright, well these tests are more than useless in the real world, but it was a lot of fun to play with Apple Silicon machine as well as the Power Mac G5. This channel mainly focuses on vintage computing and interesting devices. Please help the channel grow by liking and subscribing, which helps us produce more videos like this. And remember to comment below to tell us what you thought of the video, what you think of Apple Silicon, PowerPC, or what type of hardware that we should test in the future. Until next time, we'll see you later.